Well, good morning. I think I'm the last one between you and the lunch, possibly, so I will cut it short. Um, it is difficult to explain marketing to the parents. Imagine strategic analysis. <laughs> My father didn't succeed in 10 years. He asked me, but are you in a ministry? No, Dad, I'm not. I'm, you know, self-employed. But why are you not a military? Well, Dad, I did my military service, but I want to be free. Uh, but will you earn money? Oh, yes, yeah, sure, Dad. Uh, well, okay. It happened. Uh, today, I want to talk about a quite famous theory uh, of Talim Nasib, which is called black swans. Black swans are extremely rare things. In fact, before uh, 1790, People used to tell children, black swans don't exist. Then they were discovered in Australia. Now, according to this theory, there are certain facts that are extremely rare, with a very high impact, almost impossible to predict. It's interesting, and this you know, somehow twisted my mind uh, and to think something very near to that, what I call white petrels. Uh, in ancient times, Petrels were said to announce to mariners at sea an approaching storm. So I would like to walk you through some examples of the classic theory, you know, giving examples of what is a black swan. And indeed, I saw a couple of black swans in my life, but many more white petrels. So let's start with a the theory. Alexander the Great dies. Wow, his empire crumbles in a few years. The Archduke Ferdinand is shot in Sarajevo. Pang, pang. Boah. First World War. Who could have predicted that? And then the rise of Nazi fascism. Now, so evil people, you know, the Second World War, the Holocaust. Impossible to imagine. And then let's come to something much more nearer to us. The 2008 economic crisis. We are still living through that. As Alan Greenspan said, no one had seen it. Good. That was the theory. Let's now start with some practical black swan examples. And you will see that they are, you know, very hard-nosed, very recent in my, you know, practice as an analyst. These women are Iranian women in 1979. They were manifesting, imagine, for Ayatollah Khomeini. Yes, for the regime of the Ayatollahs. Uh, these are more well, European, if I might say. Russian women, Gorbachev. Who could have predicted that a man from the apparatus would change the Soviet Union and lead it to the fall? But there is a Tunisian woman protesting against Ben Ali. You know, some of these eternal North uh, African presidents, and well, he disappeared from the scene. And this is a Libyan girl. Well, you know about Libya. And imagine when NATO started to bomb, they were not sure that Gaddafi would fall. And finally, I would like to close with a Yemeni blogger and journalist, another eternal president that went, was sent away. I remember still the angst of my young people, uh, uh, young diplomats from Yemen, who were fearing to end up like Libya. Unfortunately, they saw the white petrol. Now, let's go down to numbers. This makes nine revolutions and two counter-revolutions missed in 32 years. You know, diplomats, journalists, spies, politicians, think tankers, analysts didn't see it. Now, 32 years, it might seem normal. Well, no, it isn't. It's like forgetting your birthday every three years. My birthday was four days ago. Sorry, I didn't miss it. But imagine that, you know. It, so there must be something wrong. And I am sure it is not some bloody conspiracy by, you know, mass attack aliens. It's, it's much more mundane. It is when you start seeing things, start listening at signals, and you stay silent when you detect change. This is the problem. White petrels do exist. They are visible. They are under our eyes. 
you just, and this is again a wrong slide, you just see them against the gray sky of an approaching storm. Because the problem is that it was there, but we didn't want to see it. Let's go back to the three classic examples, you know. The death of a ruler, but that's very predictable. Our death is the only certain thing in life, together with taxes. Okay, that's it. So, the question is, where the successor? In fact, Alexander was lacking a successor, and the same happened in Egypt. Uh, at that time, I was preparing a short you know, country card for um, any, and I was writing, uh, President Mubarak has a problem with succession. I still remember a small businessman snorting at me, saying, who cares about that? I want to do business. Well, sorry, it is important even for your business if the country is destabilized because there is not a good successor around. You can object to me, well, but Austria-Hungary had a successor, apparently. The first one, unfortunately, was killed by his father. The second one was hampered by his father. It was the good old Franz Josef. He didn't want to quit the throne. So Austria-Hungary entered the war without somebody really energetic and open-minded. And with the rise of fascism, you know, it started in 1922. We Italians invented it, you know, Italians do it better. Yes, indeed. But when the war starts in 1939, this is very slow moving black swan. It's impossible, you know, you have to see it. In fact, the reality of Mussolini's regime was clearly visible in two years with the killing of a famous dissident, Matteotti. With the Nazis, it was even simpler. In 1933, when they took power, they torched the Reichstag and they killed, you know, some hundreds of people the night of the long night, the Röhmputsch. So, yes, it was visible. And finally, I'm very sorry to tell you that also the 2008 crisis was visible. The first one was an Indian IMF advisor in 2005, sounding an alert. And then came three... American economists. And then came the old famous Neural Rubini. By the way, also your humble speaker and the global outlook of Nomos and Chaos of Nomisma wrote in 2006 that an economic tsunami was approaching. Well, no one believed these very famous people and of course neither me nor my mate were believed. It happens in life, that's the Cassandra complex. Let's now try to see how do you see white petrels. The short answer is simple. Hmm? Experience, prudence, wisdom. But I would like to give you a couple of more details so that you, know, you can see signals and be alert. I will use two examples that marked my professional life. The first one is the invasion of Iraq in 2003. You remember you know, the brilliant military campaign, mission accomplished, uh, and then it bogged down and it was defeated by guerrilla, terrorism, and especially by the loss of consensus among the occupied population. The other example, you know it already, uh, it's useful for my next three logical signals. You see this sort of cleavage. Well, it's the magic word. Let's start with the logical warnings. There are three. Structural fault lines. When you see that, that something doesn't square between your solid, sensible experience, you know, your practical experience, and the promises of easy success, pay attention. White petrol. When you see people repeating mantras that seem to make sense, but they don't, storm approaching. And then, Tina, there is no alternative, there's no plan B, it must succeed. Bad sign. You know, when you look at the crisis, you saw that there was something that was really a problem, and yet it was not seen. When you see about uh, mantras, well, you know, after the invasion, people said, we will do in Iraq what we did in Germany and Japan. Well, sorry, Iraq was more similar like Italy 
after the Second World War. In fact, the then Americans did it very differently, and they won war and peace. And then let's have a look, you know, at instinctive warnings. We are made out of instinct too, and women are especially good at, you know, being instinctive and combining apparently, you know, uh, impossible to combine things like sense and sensibility, uh, logic and instincts. I learn very much out of women's, you know, page books. The first signal is it stinks. Something that you know, you feel it smells rotten. In 2002, there was a constant stream of intelligence, so-called intelligence, saying that Saddam Hussein should have had nuclear capabilities. Before the war, I wrote to an American friend in government and said, listen, this intelligence is unconvincing, unprofessional, untrue, unethical. It stinks. Unfortunately, he didn't answer me. The second thing is you feel queasy. Uh, the Germans have a wonderful word, unheimlich. When you don't feel at home, you are out of your right place. And I felt physically the sense of oppression when I detected this, the signs you know, of the economic tsunami. It's like the heavy air oppressing you before a tornado. Bad sign, white petrol. And then there are ominous signs. Well, you know, in ancient cultures, people had a special knack for detecting them. Hmm? I can tell you, they exist, and they are only partially explained by, you know, psychoanalysis or neurosciences. When, um, when war was declared against Iraq, I had a vision. I saw the Athenian ships sailing for Sicily, the white wakes behind their sterns a splendid conquering fleet, and yet that expedition went down to history as a catastrophe. This was the sensation I had. At that time I kept it for me, today I am able to tell you, this is an ominous sign. So let's try to sum up uh, quickly. Listen to signals even if I might say, especially if they may be unpleasant. Uh, because you see, otherwise you end up like you know, a husband uh, uh, who doesn't listen at his wife. She complains, she grumbles, and he just shuts off saying, well, that's visceral nonsense. Bad thing to do. She might quit you, and you end, end up like a turkey the next turkey in the oven. Thank you very much. <laughs>